Hi guys, welcome to Computer Drivers Control. Today's lesson is about disturbances. Up till now, our main focus has been the analysis of the closed loop dynamics from the reference tracking perspective. We mainly want that the output Y be all times as close as possible of the reference R. When the reference value changes, the controller observes the deviation error and makes an actuation to reduce the error to zero again. Today we are taking a different perspective. We are going to analyze the plant response to disturbance and find means to incorporate disturbance rejection within the controller design process. For that, it's important to understand the difference between controlled inputs and uncontrolled inputs. The uncontrolled inputs are the ones that are not under our ability to modify, although sometimes we can measure them. Let's identify this uncontrolled input as W. And because of the linearity and the corresponding superposition principle, the output Y results from the sum of two components. The usual one from the controlled input U, here FU, and the second one from the uncontrolled input producing the signal D. This is the disturbance D is the observable impact of the input W at the measured output Y. Thus, we don't have to measure the original disturbance W to quantify it, but the observable effect while the control action is inactive. So we can refer directly to the signal D that reflects the effect of the disturbance at the plant's output, yet knowing that this signal is a filtration of the original disturbance, W, by the plant itself. This is the baseline for the closed loop analysis that follow. Let's try to break down the cause effect paths from the reference and the disturbance. So putting the disturbance D to zero, we have the usual closed loop transfer function from the reference input to the output y. It gives cf divided by 1 plus cf, and this is not new to you. But now, if we put the reference r to zero and focus on the transfer function from the disturbance input to the output y, the closed loop transfer function gives 1 divided by 1 plus cf. So the output y is a superposition of the effect of the disturbance input and the reference input. Summarizing, the transfer function from r to y is cf divided by 1 plus cf and the transfer function from d to y is 1 divided by 1 plus cf. Let us shorten down cf to g as the open loop gain. And some nomenclature. To the transfer function s from the disturbance we call the sensitivity transfer function because it measures the sensitivity to disturbances and to the transfer function T, from the reference to the output, we call the complementary sensitivity. And this is like the complementary because the sum of S and T is always one. If one gets larger, the other has to go smaller. From the control goals perspective, we want the output Y to be equal to the reference, and at the same time, that the output y be completely insensitive to the disturbance d. So this means we want t equal to 1, 
and we want s equal to zero. And this is possible only if the open loop gain is much larger than one. But we also know that this is not possible for all frequencies. Let's take a look at what it means in the magnitude both plot. The typical open loop gain differs at low and high frequencies. We make the gain high at low frequencies, but it eventually drops at high frequencies. Thus we have S much lower than one and T is equal to one at low frequencies, which is good, but at high frequencies, T will drop with G. And because S and T sums one, S is equal to one, meaning that the high frequency disturbances will pass intact. The typical frequency behavior of G, T, and S will go like depicted here. We have reference tracking and disturbance rejection at low frequencies, but the best we can do is to maximize the bandwidth where this is valid. So, how can I use this for attenuating the effect of a disturbance on my control system? If we specify the amount of closed loop attenuation required in a specific rejection bandwidth, we can translate this in a condition to the open loop gain. Because for high values of the open loop gain, the sensitivity function approaches the inverse of G. So having S lower than attenuation AD here is equivalent to asking G to be larger than the inverse of AD in the same bandwidth. Let us see an example. So let us take again the airplane example with the controller off. The airplane in open loop senses the effect of the disturbance and we can register it. Because ut is zero, then the signal at the output y is already the disturbance t that we need. From this signal, let's assume that this disturbance is representative of the most frequent type of disturbances to be rejected, both in magnitude and in spectral content. We know that the maximum allowable amplitude, so we can compute the required attenuation and the frequency range. For example, let's take 26 dB is attenuation and 0.1 radians per second for the bandwidth. This means that our goal is that the sensitivity function goes below minus 26 dB. So besides the usual phase margin and gain cross frequency, we have an additional condition for the minimum gain of 26 dB in the frequency range defined by omega d. Then we design the controller to comply with the specification. And we verify the rejection of the disturbance directly at the plant. From the initial amplitude to the final one. So you can have a safe and comfortable flight. This is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Send me your feedback or press like. Thank you. Bye-bye.